Then Fingon the Valiant, son of Fingolfin, resolved to heal the feud that divided the Noldor before their enemy should be ready for war. Hey everyone, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Today we are taking a look at the life and history of Fingon the Valiant, High King of the Noldor after his father Fingolfin. A shout out to my friend David Wesley for creating many of the AI images used in today's video. A link to his music channel is in the description. Please refer to the sources of today's video in the description and cards for more info. My friends, thank you all so much for joining me today. Let's begin our tale. Fingon was the eldest child of Fingolfin and Anairie, born in 1260 of the Years of the Trees in the Noldoran realm of Eldamar and Valinor. His name means something along the lines of Hair Lord or Prince, since he so resembled his grandfather Finwë and his long, dark hair. Now, Fingon did not do much that was noteworthy until after the destruction of the Two Trees in 1495 of the Years of the Trees. After this and the theft of the Silmarils by Melkor and Ungoliant, Feanor moved the Noldor people with his fiery words and oath, and it is most true to say that the elves were moved in a gradient. Some, such as Finarfin or Turgon, were not as moved by Feanor's words as others, and would look back towards Valinor, or would forsake the exile of the Noldor entirely. Others, such as the sons of Fanor, were so moved that they took their full hearty oath alongside their father. And then some, such as Fingon and Galadriel, were of mixed heart, not completely agreeing nor loving their uncle Fanor and his plan, but they did share some of his boldness and wished to see the wide open lands whereupon they could make their own way and create their own realms. Fingon was best friends with Mithros, the eldest son of Fanor, and the two would never forsake one another. It would be due to this bond between these two branches of the Noldor that they would avoid infighting amongst their people later on, but we'll get there. For now, after the oath of Feanor and his speech to leave Amon, they would do just that. Fingon, while not leading the foremost host, which was Feanor's, would lead the largest group of Noldor, which was that of his father Fingolfin, following behind Feanor. As they moved north, Fingon would find that the elves of Alcolande, the Teleri, assailed the Noldor in an effort to stop them from leaving on the behalf of the Valar, so Fingon joined his host to Feanor's to slay the marauding sea elves and save his fellow Noldor. Except, Fingon was mistaken. The sin he committed in joining the first kinslaying was actually due to his misunderstanding of the situation, as the Teleri were not attempting to take the Noldor by force, but were advising them not to leave, and would not let the Noldor take their own ships into exile. Yet Feanor slaughtered these elves to take their ships anyway, and Fingon misread the situation. I am sure that, while Fingon rushed to protect his kin, he felt remorse for his haste forever after. The Feanorians would eventually take these ships to Beleriand and burn them, not caring for the plight of the followers of Fingolfin that they had left behind. Mithros, however, spoke that they should send the ships back to retrieve Fingon the Valiant, but his father Feanor cared not. Fingon would then, along with the other Noldor, embark upon the northern journey and cross into Middle-earth over the Helcaraxe. By the time they arrived, Feanor was already slain, and Mithros would soon after be captured by a false embassy of Morgoth. Upon arriving in Middle-earth, Fingon and the others fought in the Battle of the Lamoth, and his brother Argon would be slain. The host of Fingolfin came then into Hithlam, and would discover what became of Feanor's host, who were twice defeated, once in battle and once in the false embassy. Yet tensions were still high due to the burning of the ships at Lascar. In five of the first age, Fingon set out on the most renowned journey of this character. He went north towards Angband, and decided that he would free his dear friend and cousin Mithros. Mithros had been taken by Morgoth and pinned by his wrist with chains to Thangorodrim, high above the ground. Fingon journeyed as high as he could, but found the face of the volcano sheer and at a point unpassable. Fingon grabbed his harp and sang a song of Valinor, which Mithros took up from high above, hearing the melody, just as Frodo and Sam would sing of Elbereth and Kirith Ungol ages later when Sam sought Frodo. But alas, Mithros was chained too high above, and Fingon could not reach him. Mithros begged his cousin to slay him with an arrow and end his torment, and Fingon sadly consented, crying to Manwë to speed his arrow. Yet Manwë, or at least his servant, answered in a very different way. For before Mithros could be slain out of mercy, the king of the eagles, Thrandor, came from out of the sky and bore Fingon to his cousin. Yet still, even after Fingon came there, he could not free him from the cuff of Morgoth. So Fingon cut his cousin's hand off and released him from capture. And so Mithros and Fingon were brought back to Hithlum by the great eagle. 
Fingon was praised for this deed, as it would mend much of the strife between the houses of the Noldor, especially when Mithros gave up his title, the High King of the Noldor, to his uncle Fingolfin, and decided that he and his brothers should move to eastern Beleriand, and avoid being too close to the other Noldor. The beauty of all of this as well is that I think Fingon would have rescued Mithros regardless of the political outcome, although that certainly helped, for Mithros was his friend, and that's all the reason he needed. I believe that is also why Thorondor helped him out as he did, for this was an entirely virtuous deed, regardless of the actions, some of which would be evil, that Mithros would commit after his life was saved. And so, with the wounds of the Noldor mended, their eyes turned north towards Angband. They would lay siege to Morgoth for hundreds of years, and until Morgoth found a way to send all of his armed forces out at once, his attacks upon the Noldor were fruitless. Fingon and his father would have direct rule over Hithlum and Fingon over Dor Lomen, a province within Hithlum, while there was a long peace for centuries during the siege. Morgoth did, however, attempt to hinder the Elves of the West twice, once with a force of orcs in 155 who were utterly ruined by the Noldor of Fingon, and once, accidentally, when Glaurong, the first dragon, came forth and was nearly slain by the arrows and followers of Fingon who rode out to meet him in 260. These instances showed Morgoth that he should not underestimate the High Elves of the West, and he decided to lie in wait until Angband was truly ready to burst forth. During that time of waiting, men made their way into Beleriand, and one of the three houses of the Adain, that of Hador, would come to serve the House of Fingolfin, and they were given land in which to live in Dor Lomen. Fingon would give Hador the dragon helm of Dor Lomen, passed to elves by the dwarves who had made it. The elves and men lived in peace until the Battle of Sudden Flame, the Dagor Bragolok, in 455 of the First Age, when suddenly, fire and smoke burst forth from Thangorodrim, destroying the land before Angband, and the armies of the north came down upon the leaguer, which held Angband at bay, and broke the siege. Balrogs and Glaurong, now fully grown, came forth with armies of orcs. Fingolfin rode forth to glory, wounding Morgoth in a duel before being slain himself, and his son Fingon would become the High King of the Noldor afterwards. Yet he was now in a far weaker position in the north. Fingon would rule from his father's fortress of Barad Aethil, which looked out to the north and east from the edge of Hithlum. Morgoth would try to take advantage of Fingon's weaker position and kill yet another High King of the Noldor, sending orcs from the east and west. Those in the east would meet the men of the House of Hador, and while the lord of the house would be slain and Hurin, his son, would become the next lord, this force of orcs would be defeated, while the elves of the havens of the Thalas under Círdan the Shipwright would defeat the orcs near the coast in the west, saving Fingon. It was all the elves and men could do to protect their own homes, yet the wilderness of Beleriand was terribly dangerous to all manners of free peoples. Yet through fate, chance, and no small amount of love, Morgoth would be assailed in a way none expected. Baron and Luthien would steal a Silmaril from his crown, and even defeat Sauron in his forward position on the Isle of Werewolves not far from Hithlum, and the great dreadful beast Karkaroth would be slain. Morgoth was not unassailable, and this inspired a renewed alliance of friendship, the union of Mithros in 472. He planned to have his elves in the east, the Feanorians, attack and push Angband back, while Fingon and his hosts assailed from the west. This was aimed to be another glorious battle, like the one that started the Siege of Angband, yet it was not so. Though forces came from men in the House of Hador, dwarves from the Blue Mountains, and elves from many different realms, there was treachery also. The elves of the east would be betrayed by the Easterlings, while the elves of the west were made to attack early, and the battle would go astray, becoming the Nurnaith Arnoidiad, the Battle of Unnumbered Tears. More and more forces of Morgoth, dragons, balrogs, wolves, and ever more orcs were unleashed upon the west. Torgon retreated so that Gondolin might be a refuge against Morgoth in the coming days of darkness, and Fingon fought until the bitter end. He would eventually be surrounded by balrogs. He fought Gothmog, the lord of the balrogs, directly, but would be restrained by a whip from another balrog, and slain by Gothmog's axe. He was thus beaten into the dust, and his banner was trod into the mire of his blood. So ended High King Fingon the Valiant, one whose boldness and courage was used in the defense of others, those whom he loved. And after his death, Fingon's realm would be ruined. His brother Torgon would become the next High King of the Noldor, before it was passed on to Gilgalad, who was not the son of Fingon, as that is said to be an editorial mistake in the Silmarillion. Rather, Fingon was never married, he never had children, and though he was valiant, 
His story ends in sorrow and loneliness. And so we come to the end of our tale on High King Fingon. From this tale we see that we must temper our haste to do what is right against the wisdom to know that our actions are in fact righteous, just as Fingon surely wished he had done during the kinslaying. We must, in the end, however, act on our ambitions to help others truly. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. What are your thoughts on the tale of Fingon? Let me know in the comments below. He is an interesting hero in the Silmarillion, one with many dimensions of goodness and some mistakes committed out of the will to do what is right. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider getting some candles from our friends Mythology Candles, or order some Weta or United Cutlery Lord of the Rings swords, statues, and other replicas from Castle Khan who does international shipping, and use the code WEST at checkout, and please check out our merch and Patreon. Thanks to our Valor tier patrons and YouTube members, Peter Shepard, Blair Scott Merton, John Hume, Elizabeth Calvert, Maz Gibbs, Reese Jenkins, Arthur Merlin, Dale Davis, Kingswald Project, Robert Bogue, Theodore Moonviper, and Andrew Carlyle and Zumi, our newest Valor tier patrons. Thank you so much to all of our patrons and YouTube members. Please subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today. And I'll see you all again next week with a video on what was Aragorn's plan after Gandalf fell. My friends, thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one.